Hey, I'm Stan Prokopenko. Welcome to Proko. Today we're going to learn how to draw calves. <laughs> calf muscles. <laughs> so the calf has two muscles, but only one insertion tendon. Probably the most famous tendon of all tendons. Achilles! The Achilles tendon. That's all of this. The Achilles tendon attaches the gastrocnemius and soleus to the block of the heel. When the calf contracts, the Achilles tendon pulls up on the heel to straighten the ankle. So, soleus and gastrocnemius point your toes, which means the strongest calf muscles belong to the ballerinas. Maybe. I don't know. Let's get right to the heart and soul of the matter, the soleus. <laughs> soleus. Soleus comes from Latin for a type of flat sandal, which is a pretty accurate description of this muscle's form. We've seen mattress muscles like this before. Brachialis in the arm, fastus intermedius in the quads. We kind of blew off fastus intermedius because it's almost completely hidden. But the soleus is very much visible on the surface. It can be seen independent of gastrocnemius even on thin figures. It clearly pokes out from underneath the edge of a gastrocnemius. Soleus can even be seen in front view, here, behind the tibia. And gastrocnemius is here, behind soleus. Kind of like stair steps. Soleus exists entirely below the knee, originating from the tibia and fibula. It's important to notice how slanted soleus is. High on the outside, low on the inside. Gastrocnemius has the same slant. If we zoom way out, this angle fits the pattern of alternating apexes throughout the leg. The zigzag of asymmetry. These are rhythms we seek to exaggerate when we want to draw dynamic anatomy. Roughly two-thirds down the leg, soleus begins to narrow and interlace with the Achilles tendon. It leaves a gap as it passes behind the ankle at least one finger in width. The gastrocnemius. Now, for the superficial superstar, gastrocnemius. As important as soleus is, Mount Gastric is more of a focal point. It's probably the muscle you think of when you think of the calf. The hamstring tendons create this tunnel for the gastrocnemius to squeeze into. This top region is normally hidden by a fat pad, but it's good to know the origin anyway. Gastrocnemius originates above the knee, on top of the femoral condyles, and it has two heads, one for each condyle. These heads tend to soften together to create a round bump. This is where the name gastrocnemius comes from. It's gastric, as in stomach, because the anatomists are throwing shade and saying that the calf looks like a big round pot belly. Anyway, it really is two separate heads and they split when the calf tenses. These heads are not symmetrical. The lateral head ends higher and tends to create an oblique edge that flows into the soleus. The medial head is bigger and rounder. You'll usually see it take a sharp turn inward to attach to the Achilles tendon. In essence, the lateral head makes a slash, and the medial head makes a hook. Together, they kind of make an upside-down heart. Aww. The gastrocnemius is most interesting where muscle meets tendon, about halfway down the lower leg. If you're idealizing the design, you can make the muscle longer on a female to get that sleek, feminine look that artists often go for, and a little shorter on a male if you're shooting to make your model look more masculine and accent their muscularity. There's a lot of variation in that proportion between individuals. And of course, when gastrocnemius contracts, the belly shortens. So if someone's wearing high heels or reaching for something up high, the muscle belly will shorten. Remember that slant. The Achilles tendon doesn't come in like this, but at an angle. Like vastus medialis in the quads, the medial gastrocnemius head is low and heavy and creates a round form where it meets the Achilles tendon. Now for the calf muscle's final form, the Achilles tendon. Despite the legends about its fragility, 
the Achilles tendon is actually the thickest and strongest tendon in the human body. It wraps around the lower third of the calf and funnels muscle tissue from soleus and gastrocnemius into a thick cable that anchors down on the heel bone. This creates a V-shape. The narrowest point of the tendon is about three fingers width above the heel. So let's review. From inside profile, we can see how the gastrocnemius is big and round, while the soleus is wide and flat. The gastrocnemius meets the Achilles tendon at around the halfway mark. If we smooth things over, the calf looks like an upside down bowling pin, or a chicken drumstick, or a caveman's club. Except it's slanted, high on the outside, low and heavy on the inside. When the leg tenses, it splits into three forms. The two heads of the gastrocnemius and the soleus flowing down into the Achilles tendon. And that's what you need to know to draw the calf. Except of course all the stuff I left out of this video. That stuff is in the premium video. P -p -p premium In premium, we'll analyze the forms in more detail and expand on the anatomical info. And as always, you'll get assignment demonstrations, 3D models, and eBooks. Of course, there's only one way to really master anatomy. Get that pencil sharpened, and let's get started on your assignment. Your assignment is to do tonal studies of the calves from the photos provided in the description below. Start with a linear land, making sure you're tracking everything where it should go, and then add clean tone on top to study the planar structure of the calves. Make sure to post your assignments in the community at proco.com slash groups if you want to be featured in the critique video. All right, thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment below if you have any questions about the calves.